Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, in all this world of generative AI and and and, and all this stuff. Is there still gosh, ML? Are we still doing ML? Yes, we absolutely are doing ML. And uh, quite frankly, for uh, narrow narrower data sets than generative AI, which can be up to you know 100 petabytes at this point, just for the training model, uh, it's 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 more efficient and and less expensive. So uh, I saw that, Dan. <laughs> saw that. I bet. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, this is good. So, but one of the challenges for let's say smaller businesses and even startups is how do I come in there and reserve enough GPUs to do what what I need to do, right? It's not just one GPU. When you're doing machine learning training, let's say you're trying trying to tra uh, train a, a vision model or something like that, you need hundreds of GPUs that are interconnected in a logical way that have uh, a, a singular uh, memory plane to be able to do all that, all, all that work on. And so what Amazon did is they brought out what's called capacity blocks for, for ML, for machine learning workloads. And what that does is it, uh, you can actually schedule it like a hotel, right? Which says, hey, on January 5th, uh, I, I need this much capacity for my GPUs, uh, maybe for, for this long. And uh, what they do is they reserve that. And these are EC2 ultra clusters, uh, which means that they're of the highest performance uh, optimized for ML. And then they're connected through what's called EFA, which is Elastic, elastic Fabric Adapter, uh, because we all know that it's not just about what, what you can do on that rack, but what you can do across multiple racks. And EFA uh, gives you uh, uh, what they're calling petabit scale uh, non-blocking network, uh, which essentially is to get your workload done a lot quicker, and again, to have that uh, planar, uh, uh, planar memory. So that's it, baby. AMSL capacity blocks. Uh, look at this space. I, I see no reason why they also wouldn't do, you know, thousand uh, node uh, systems for for uh, foundational models. But read, that's just spec. Read, that's just that's just a prediction. Read my lips. This will get bigger. <laughs> um, Pat, I mean. Why I think this is also important is, I don't know about you, but I'm really kind of getting tired of having to always say, I know everyone thinks AWS is behind on generative AI. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if I don't- I know, it, just, it, it came up in even our interviews yesterday. It came up, yeah. uh, you know, and like I'm going cross-eyed and it's like, yeah, look, AWS has more workloads on more compute across more geographies than I think like pretty much all the hyperscalers combined. Now, again, that's funny math, so don't hold me to it. But the reason I'm, I'm pointing that out is compute and data and workloads are the sort of impetus of AI. And so AWS had a different strategy and it wasn't based upon necessarily like completely locking it, or, uh, it, it up with a single uh, large language model and a kind of a closed uh, architecture, which some others did early on, and were able to get good out the gate marketing and story narrative leads. But AWS has kind of taken that we're going to be the open source, uh, we're going to be open uh, in our approach. And we'll offer some FMs, foundational models, we'll offer, you know, Titan, we'll offer Bedrock, we'll offer API connectors, you can run multiple models, same time, all that kind of stuff. So, Pat. I just kind of chalk this up to AWS being AWS, offering lots of services, looking at how do you take all of its capacity, add value, and make it easier for companies to do the things that are going to need to be done. And, you know, as we know, there's going to be more and more smaller models, middle-sized models, foundational models, and the large language models are increasingly commoditized. They're going to be increasingly, the, you know, we're kind of seeing a world where, you know, hugging faces GitHub for AI, you know, and that's kind of where this is going and there's competition for that, but I think it's a good use of resources. 